Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangagwa must regularize his illegitimate leadership position but not contest the 2023 presidential election as he would be a geriatric by then, prominent corporate executive Caleb Dengu, who is an ally of Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, has said. This comes as Nangagwa is currently under siege from within the ruling ZANU-PF as party bigwigs aligned to Chiwenga, say he ascended to power internally through unconstitutional means, hence he is an illegitimate leader. ZANU-PF member Saibeth Musinjezi has filed a high court application challenging Nangagwa's rise to power and the resultant dubious mandate through the infamous 19 November 2017 Central Committee meeting, which he says was not lawfully convened, constituted and conducted. The shock challenge, coming as it did around the ZANU-PF annual conference in Bandura, foreshadows the culmination of the party's unresolved leadership fight, which is expected to explode during the elective Congress next year ahead of the 2023 elections. Nangagwa is determined to seek re-election, but Chiwenga and his faction are battling to stop him in his tracks. In a book titled The Bridge, Pathway to New Zimbabwe, Dengu, a well-established development banker, who has specialized in structured project and trade finance, as well as risk management systems, says Nangagwa should not run in 2023, but instead allow a new younger leader to contest. Your Excellency, given your advanced age and the workload required to turn around the nation, a nation as broken as ours, it is advised that you do not seek re-election as state president in 2023, Dengu says. You will be 82 years old then. You can choose to remain as first secretary of ZANU-PF to assist with generational transformation of leadership in the party and government. Given the demography of the country, the nation requires younger leadership to run the country. You have an opportunity to identify competent young talent in the 40-60-year range to take over positions in both government and ZANU-PF. The recommended leadership can be security cleared by our National Security Council NSC. Dengu says the NSC has to ensure ministers consider national security in a strategic way as they formulate and implement government policies and programs. On Nangagwa's legitimacy, Dengu, who was in the liberation struggle and later in government, said, Your Excellency, you became leader of ZANU-PF during the transitional period from R.G. Mugabe to the Second Republic, which was christened the New Dispensation in November 2017. Your elevation to the position of First Secretary did not follow the established election process which starts from provincial nomination. It is therefore imperative that you revisit that chapter in order to get the full support and endorsement of ZANU-PF. This will stop dissent and leadership challenges in the party ranks. Your government is mostly undermined by the ZANU-PF elite rather than opposition members. Dot the businessman, a Riozim Limited board vice chair, who also chairs the Audit and Risk Committee, as well as the Remuneration Committee, and is managing partner in CDF Trust and Consulting BV, an investment advisory platform and private equity management firm, said Nangagwa should visit provinces, not just in his capacity as president and ZANU-PF official, but as someone seeking to regularize his unlawful position as part Dengu, who staunchly supported the Nangagwa government when it came to power in 2017 after the overthrow of the late former President Robert Mugabe in a military coup, is Chiwenga's homeboy and ally. He was born in Huedza where the vice president also comes from in 1959, just before the National Democratic Party NDP, was formed in January 1960. The NDP, led by founding nationalist movement leader Joshua Nkomo, was preceded by the African National Council, also led by Nkomo. The NDP was banned in 1961 and ZAPU emerged. ZAPU was also banned in 1962 and the People's Caretaker Council, PCC, was formed as a front. 
Both Zapu and the PCC were led by Nkomo. ZANU, a breakaway from ZAPU, was formed in 1963 led by Ndabaningi Sithole. Mugabe seized power from Sithole in a prison coup in 1974, when nationalist leaders from ZAPU and ZANU were in detention. He only regularized his position after ousting Sithole three years later at the Chimoyo Congress in 1977. Mugabe, also removed in a coup in 2017, was at the helm of ZANU for 40 years. Before becoming the ZANU helmsman, he had been Secretary General, having been elected at the 1964 Congress in Gweru when Sithole emerged as party leader. Dengu joined the liberation struggle on 7 April 1975 aged 16 with six friends. Following independence in 1980, he worked in the Ministry of Finance, Office of the President and Cabinet, Central Mechanical Equipment Department and Urban Development Corporation. From 1981 to 1985, he trained as a chartered secretary with the British Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, becoming an associate and fellow thereafter between 1986 and 1988. He went on to attain a Master of Business Administration degree at the University of Zimbabwe in 1993 and do an advanced financial management program at Strathclyde Graduate Business School in Glasgow, Scotland. He came back and ran businesses, including CDF Trust and Consulting BV, worked with RioZim Limited, specifically its subsidiaries Rio Gold and Rio Energy. He became company deputy board chair and chairperson of the Audit and Risk Committee, as well as the Remuneration Committee. He advised Rio Zim on Sengwa Power Station and chaired Cellulant Zimbabwe, Private, Limited, a mobile payments platform. Prior to the formation of CDF Trust in 2010, Caleb was a development banking and finance professional for 22 years. He worked for international and regional development banks. He also worked for Amsterdam-based Common Fund for Commodities and Nairobi-based PTA Bank, now the Trade and Development Bank. Among other undertakings, he set up a greenfield coal mining company in Zimbabwe, now the largest coal producer in the country, advised Haskell Group to sell a platinum project to Great Dyke Investments, a consortium comprising Russians, the government and the Zimbabwean military, now owned by the Russians and Landella Investments, and is currently involved in Zimberders that is modernizing Bight Bridge border post, in his book, released last year in September and that Shuenga reportedly read, which gives a synopsis of what actually went wrong to such a promising country like Zimbabwe and makes concrete suggestions on how to arrest a persistent decline and change the economic trajectory, Dengu identifies leadership and policy failures as the main reasons for the current parlous state of the nation and people's suffering. The main cause of Zimbabwe's dramatic economic collapse is leadership failure, hence it is important to properly locate the effect of leadership on the country's development, Dengu says. We need to identify leadership at all levels that believes in meritocracy, excellence, openness, and integrity. Leadership that is capable of applying resources to change paradigms in a way that will impact lives of citizens. The Zimbabwe government under Robert Mugabe was applying 20th century solutions to 21st century problems, hence the demise of the country. Even the new dispensation that took over in 2017 has not yet figured out the consequences of smart sanctions and the impact of leadership. Dot ultimately for Dengu, the bottom line is that Nangagwa is illegitimate and should not run in 2023.